Intermediates, the Goldilocks zone of sedans. Not too big and not too small. The midsize family sedan was America's best-selling segment from the late 1980s until SUVs began outselling sedans a half a dozen years ago. So what qualifies as a midsize sedan? According to Japanese regulation, a normal-sized passenger car is one between 4.7 and 6 meters long, or 185 to 136 inches, and between 1.7 and 2 meters wide, or 67 to 79 inches, or has an engine bigger than 2 liters. Although if you consider that the three size classes there are normal, small, and light, the middle segment would be small cars or cars smaller than 4.7 meters long, 1.7 meters wide, 2 meters high, and 2 liters or less. The European C segment is the medium-sized segment, with cars around 4 meters, or roughly, cars between 4.2 and 4.7 meters, or 165 to 185 inches, although some places use the bigger D segment for medium cars. But these classifications are a bit fluid and often generalized. In the U.S., for EPA mileage concerns, a mid-sized car is a sedan between 110 and 120 cubic feet of interior volume, or a wagon between 130 and 160 cubic feet. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration considers a mid-sized car as one between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety combines weight and the size of its shadow, making a mid-sized car one with a shadow of 80 to 89 square feet and 3,000 pounds or more, or one with a 90 to 99 square foot shadow and less than 3,500 pounds. But as always, the manufacturers did whatever they wanted. The mid-sized market effectively arrived in the U.S. with the 1962 Ford Fairlane, fitting between the Big Galaxy and the Small Falcon, a position it held until 1970, when it was phased out in favor of the better-equipped Torino. Naturally, Mercury got its own, slightly bigger version in the two-year-only Meteor, soon to be replaced by the smaller Comet as that car moved upmarket. Similarly, GM's upmarket compacts would quickly get bigger and be reclassified as mid-sized, even though they remained the small car for their prospective brands. For 1964, Buick's Special Skylark, Oldsmobile's F-85 Cutlass, and Pontiac's Tempest Le Mans were joined by the Chevrolet Malibu, which actually did fit above the smaller Chevy 2 Nova, making them mid-sized cars. The Special name carried on through 1969, and the Skylark remained the mid-sized Buick until the 1973 restyle that was renamed Sentry. At Oldsmobile, the F-85 made it to 1970, while the Cutlass remained in the segment until 1999, even while the name was being used in other segments. Pontiac's Tempest, the car the GTO would be built around, carried on until 1970, while the better-equipped Le Mans lasted until 1981. The popular Chevelle lasted until 1977, while the Malibu carried on until 1983. But the Malibu name would be revived in the segment in 1997 and is currently the only sedan Chevrolet is offering in the U.S. In 1965, Plymouth's big B-body Belvedere became the mid-size car with the introduction of the new bigger C-body Fury, a name that continued on until 1970 when the satellite version carried on on its own. Dodge also got a mid-size B-body in 1965 as the Coronet, Dodge's mid-size until 1976, after which the car carried on with square headlights under the Monaco name. Although Chrysler didn't technically offer a small car until the PT Cruiser, the LeBaron, introduced in 1977, competed in the mid-size segment until 1994. Cadillac's Seville became the mid-size Cadillac in 1982 with the introduction of the Cimarron, the Seville name carried on until 2004, becoming the STS, or Seville Touring Sedan, itself lasting another eight years. Lincoln's well-used Continental name arrived in the mid-size luxury segment for 1982 as an indirect replacement for the Versailles. It carried on until 2002, when it sat between the similarly priced Town Car and LS, 
One could argue that AMC was in the segment before it even existed with the classic Rambler that technically carried on as the AMC Rebel until 1970. Toyota's Camry replaced the Corona in 1982, but some would suggest it wasn't a midsize until the early 90s, and in 1997 it replaced the Ford Taurus as the best-selling car in the U.S., and has remained a top seller ever since. Honda's Accord was introduced in 1976 as a subcompact, becoming a midsize by 1990, and has even pushed into the edge of the large car segment a couple of times since then. The Altima replaced the Stanza in 1992, growing into the midsize segment, and now it's as big as a Maxima. The Mazda 616 arrived in 1970 to become the 626 in 1978, and just the 6 in 2002. Mitsubishi's Gallant dates back to 1969, becoming a midsize in the early 80s, and carrying on until 2012, at least in the U.S., Subaru introduced the Legacy in 1989 to compete in the segment. At Acura, the TL replaced the Vigor in 1995, becoming the TLX in 2015. Infiniti's first mid-size sedan was a version of the Nissan Leopard, sold first as the M30 and then as the J30. Lexus offered the GS starting in 1991 as a step down from the big LS, the Mercedes E-Class nomenclature began in 1993, being put on a model that had been in production since 1986. The 5 Series was introduced in 1972 and was the big BMW until the 7 Series was introduced in 1977. In 1994, the A6 replaced the Audi 100 to fit between the big A8 and the small A4. The Volkswagen Passat has been around since 1973, originally sold in the U.S. as the Dasher, and Jaguar's revived S-Type of 2000 to 2008 fit between the big XJ and the small X-Type. But even this so-called popular segment has thinned out quite a bit. Ford killed off the Fusion last year. Chrysler hasn't had a mid-sized offering since the 200 was discontinued in 2017, leaving the Malibu as the sole American mid-size family car. In the luxury segment, the Lexus GS was canceled last year, leaving the Camry-based ES to fill the gap and compete with the Infiniti Q50, Genesis G80, and Acura TLX. The CTS was replaced by the even worse named CT5 last year, now Cadillac's biggest car, competing in the mid-size luxury market alongside the Mercedes E-Class, BMW 5 Series, and Audi A6. America apparently gets its own version of the Volkswagen Passat, but that's about to be discontinued. Of course, there are other European cars that fit into this segment. We just don't get them here. Could Peugeot's 508 show up here as the next mid-size Chrysler? Well, in spite of its King of Beige title, Toyota's Camry still manages close to 300,000 in annual U.S. sales, far above even its closest rival, the Honda Accord. In fact, most of the remaining competitors are Asian, such as Nissan's Altima, Mazda's 6, and Subaru's Legacy, as well as the Hyundai Sonata and Kia Stinger. While Kia's Optima was replaced by the K5 this year, which I'm sure is perfectly marketable in this competitive segment. And based on recent trends, a segment that may soon evolve into tall station wagons, which sounds much cooler than it actually is. But until then, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.